This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Time to visit with Bill King from Nashville Sports Radio, the king of college football talk. He is on the air 6 until 9, Monday through Friday, WNSR, and we appreciate his time on Tuesday afternoons on Halftime. Afternoon, Bill. How you doing? Hey, guys. What's up? We got football this Saturday, man. Is there a... I'd be interested more in Navy, Notre Dame. Are there? Is there any other game? I think, what are there, six? Six Division One games that are on the schedule. Anything that's piquing your interest or just the fact that it's actual, real college football games that will grab your interest? I want to see Sam Hartman. You just mentioned Notre Dame. He's a fantastic quarterback. I want to see how he fits in. I'm assuming, well, they should be better, much better receiver than they were a year ago. They were terrible there. Probably the best set of offensive tackles pair in the game of college football at Notre Dame, and they need to be better on defense. Last year, they didn't play as well as they thought they would with the veterans. And they're playing maybe with a new coach. I still think it's going to be extract your teeth time. It's going to be root canal time defending that triple option, but that's going to be fun. And Hawaii's got to come here to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's been doing lots of renovations and building And I think both end zones at Vanderbilt will look like a war zone. So if you score a touchdown and you run through the end zone at Vanderbilt Saturday against Hawaii, you may hit a a crane or something. It it could be like when Ezekiel Elliott jumped in the Salvation Army Bowl, like you're just going (laughs) to jump in there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't know if you guys are old enough, but it was 89-ish or something. Texas is playing Miami. And this is in the heyday of Miami, just crushing people and running it up. And it's a cotton bowl, and Randall Thrill Hill catches a post pattern, runs through the end zone, into the tunnel, and I never saw him come back out. And that was for guys about the 57 point. Funniest thing I've ever seen. That's a famous highlight. I've seen that. I just it didn't is. know who it was it or is. when it was, but I, I think everybody's seen that one. That's Randall Thrill Hill. Yeah, that was the Jimmy Johnson days. Uh, Bill, I was looking yeah. at this Florida Utah matchup uh, that Thursday. And I'm, I'm, I think it could be telling for both teams. You know, how is Florida going to be this year? I don't know where, what you think of Florida. And then Utah having a chance if they're going to p- compete out there in the, in the last year of the Pac-12. Utah's got quarterback injury problems. They're a tough guy football team. They should win the game. They are at home. Graham Mertz makes his debut for Florida. Florida will be, I think, a pretty good running team. They've got good running backs. I think they'll have a decent to solid offensive line last year defensively was not good i'd be surprised if florida pulls an upset but i think it has a chance to be a closer game so i mean we knew mertz would be the quarterback at florida i think that was announced last week uh we learned over the weekend peyton thorn will be qb number one for auburn um they had robbie ashford of course working at quarterback mostly last year tj finley as well um, Thorne, this is so interesting because uh, Freeze says that Thorne is going to be the quarterback, at least to start the season, because of leadership and because he knows the offense. And this is somebody that joined the team after spring ball. So I understand it's a new coaching staff and everything like that, but this feels like a shotgun marriage. What did you make of Peyton Thorne being QB1, at least to start the year for Auburn? Doesn't mean he's going to be the QB1 for the entire year, and truthfully, I'd be surprised if he starts every game. I'm a big Robbie Ashford fan relative to how he would fit into Hugh Freeze's style, but he's not as balanced as Thorne, and that's probably the calculation right now. Robbie Ashford is a freaky athlete, really is. I don't know if you trust him in the passing game as much as he'd like, and that's probably the hold up right now. I have to find a way to get that guy out there somehow, but I guess I'm not surprised. If you're going to bring him in, he's a two-year starter for Sparty. Auburn's got good NIL money, so they were able to buy him away from Michigan State. I mean, let's just call it what it is. That's what's going on out there. And uh, I think Auburn could be, I know this isn't your question, I think they could be a bit of a pleasant surprise this year. Man, I just I just wonder about about Freeze turning the program around in one year. I know he's got a lot of recruiting momentum. They did well in the portal. I just I just kind of question if if they're going to 
have a turnaround season right now. I mean, maybe, you know, three wins in the SEC would sort of be like a turnaround from what they've done of late. I just question yeah. whether or not it's going to happen this year. When you look at who he's bringing in in the next couple of years and his pedigree as a coach, yes, I think he will end up turning Auburn around. I just don't know if it's this year. It's a very good point. I, I think it's not if it's when. And we may get some hints of it this year. It might not be a complete turnaround. I don't know if they have the first deal top to bottom. I question whether or not they do to turn it around this year. Turn it around, I think, would mean be competitive mm -hmm. to win the league, to win the, the West, I should say. I don't think they're there yet. Alabama's better. LSU's better. A&M's got better players. I think Ole Miss probably has better players. Arkansas, arguably, has better players. So it's going to be tough. Plus, I mean, let's face it, guys. We've talked about it for a million years, but the SEC West in its last year is brutal. I mean, there's no free lunch in that whole group. The latest with Jim Harbaugh, um, I, I, th I guess it had came out yesterday that he's going to do a self-imposed, uh, I mean, so I guess he's still going to practice. He's just not going to go to the game. Is this a good move for, for Jimmy Harbaugh, where, or is he going to still, is there something? Is there another suspension that's going to come down next year, you think? Very weird. First of all, it's going to be four games originally. Then we hear the COI, Committee on Infractions, wants to take a wider lens at this whole thing, so no reason to suspend him, self-impose it, when you don't even know what's going on yet with the COI. Now they come back and say, we're self-imposing three games. I've got, guys, I, I like to think I know what's going on. I've got no clue as to how that math works. No idea. I, that's what I got into. It seems yesterday. weird. Yeah. It's like I don't get it. It was like, well, you weren't okay with a four-game suspension. What makes Michigan think that they're, that the COI is going to be okay with a three-game suspension? The ma I know math. I'm not great at math, but I can do that math specifically, and it's not difficult. Well, I, I mean, this is kind of a weak explanation. They open league play in game four, and that's against Rutgers. So you can say, what difference does it make? True, very good point. But I don't know. If, what they're thinking. No, no ID. Hey, one other thing I wanted to bring up about, uh, now I know I think this is on your verboten list because you tweeted it out recently. <laughs> week zero. And I hate the week zero thing just like I don't like calling this fall camp because it's the first right. week of the football season, so I'm going to go with week one. So here's, right. here, is a, here is a prime reason why Southern California is getting out of the, of the Pac-12 and joining the Big Ten. I already got in this a couple days. You look at this. The primetime game on ESPN Saturday is Massachusetts at New Mexico State. USC is kicking off one hour later against San Jose State. Southern California has the reigning Heisman Trophy player. He is their number six in the country. And yet they're on the Pac-12 network where not a lot of people are going to be able to watch it. This is, <laughs> this is example number one, perhaps, of why the Pac-12 is dissolving. One more year. That's all they've got. Yeah, I mean, I want to see. I don't care if Southern Cal is playing against the mascot. I want. I, that's a huge brand. I love watching it. I'm, I'm with you on that one. They got a big recruit in, uh, or at least a commit, Julian Lewis, number one prospect, 2026 quarterback. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Riley gets he gets some great quarterbacks, and there's good reason for that. Well, they got Malachi Nelson, who's a true freshman there right now, five-star. Obviously, the quarterback was a five-star out of D.C. area, and he just won the Heisman. If, if they're properly coached, you can get that kind of kid all day and night to, to Southern Cal, like quarterback or any position. Bill, can I get your way too early uh, playoff four prediction, or do you have a team outside of the top ten? Who's a team that could surprise you that nobody's talking about outside of the top ten, if it's a Notre Dame, uh, if it's a Kansas State, that can make that playoff four this year? Like a TCU. Mm -hmm. That like one's always year, hard. Yeah. No, it's, a really, it, it's a really good question. It's always hard because I don't believe in parity, meaning I don't believe there is any parity nor do I believe we're on the verge of parity because of NIL. I know that's a theory. I just don't buy into the theory. I, I, I mean, it's shocking. We were just talking about Michigan in a degrading way, but that's a, this could be their best team. I mean, this could, this could very well be their best team, top to bottom, under Harbaugh, man, which means one of their better teams in a while. They, last they won it in, in 97, but... 
and I would have Georgia in there. I would not have Alabama in my top four, uh, but I'd have Georgia in there. I'd probably have Ohio State in there, and then you've got to find another team, and it could very well be another SEC team. I don't think it's a Big 12 team. I don't think it, it, I don't know that I would have Southern Cal in my top four. I just can't pick out who I think this year's TCU will be. I just, I just, on paper, and that one, guys, what we just saw last year might not happen for another 20, 30 years. I'm talking about a, a program and a good program, but getting all the way to the championship game. And now that we're expanding to 12, even though the format is in question, I think it would make it even harder for TCU to do what they did. Yeah, I believe they were six and six the year before, seven and five, something like that. Oh, yeah. I, I look at Tennessee with Josh Heupel and what he's doing there. If that defense is going to be good enough, to, are, are you buying Tennessee stock this year? I think they're ten and two, tight, good as a potential, but I don't think they're good enough to advance further. I still think that the roster is too lean because of the. NCAA and some of the self-imposed stuff. And, and a rash of injuries would be a problem. Their center right now, we talked about this. I think he's going to be okay, but they're still quiet about that. That could be a problem, too, for them. Hmm. What do you make of Kentucky? I see a lot of people making noise about Kentucky. Um, you know, brought in uh, May uh, from North Carolina as the quarterback. Oh, yeah. Got a good running back that they've brought in. I think the kid who was at Vanderbilt that rushed for a thousand yards is uh, is Kentucky flying under the radar? Oh yeah, I, I think. And and the kid you're talking about is Devin Leary, right? Leary, yeah, that's right, not May. State. Yeah, he's a really good quarterback. I mean, if he's healthy, he's as good as Sam Hartman. He's that. He's a I think as a college player, you could argue he is an upgrade for Will Lutz. Hmm. And that's saying something. You know what you're going to get. They're very physical. They're going to have a tough running game. They're going to have a solid offensive line. They're going to be physical up front defensively. I just don't think they're ever going to be athletic enough. And that's the difference between them and some of the upper echelon teams. I think it's the athletes. They'll be well coached, but I'm not I'm not going to go to – they're on the overachieving trail this year. Bill, appreciate you, man. Always fun talking Good. football with Thanks, you or anything guys. else. Enjoy the games on Saturday, okay? Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bill. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.